I did have an opening gap reversal in a silver stock yesterday. And you could use there or there are ways you can get gaps before the open. Okay. So there's software out there that'll help you find the gaps before the open. And I do that every morning, five minutes before the open. I've got a little alarm set. And when the alarm goes off, I check the opening gaps. And if something look in, looks interesting, then I go for it. Ideally, with these opening gap reversals, as I talked about before, you want a well known company. It's kind of just the opposite of what I'm looking for in a stock trade. Like we're, we're long STXS and ASPI and KNF and all these kind of crazy volatile inefficient stocks for the opening gap reversals as a general statement you want a well-known name and that's because you're going to have the most amount of players in it and it's going to help that opening gap reversal play out now ag is a silver stock it's fairly high in volume it doesn't really fit the the complete mold of of a um i'm just going to pull it out one out the air like the, an nvidia or something like the video would be a perfect opening gap reversal type of stock because you've got a lot of players in it. It would shake out a bunch of players and a bunch of players would rush back in and, and people who got knocked out might rush back in. And there's a lot of fun and games that happen. Market makers might take it down. And that's kind of the kind of the theory behind opening gap reversal is you have like an extreme gap down because the market maker has to buy the stock. So he just keeps lowering his bid to a point where, or he lowers his bid to a point where he's willing to buy it at such a low level that he knows he could flip it out higher later in the day so in a way or in a sense you're trading on the same side as a market maker when you when you trade these opening gap reversals anyway just a thousand shares on this a little bit bigger type of investment so to speak than bitcoin and this is just in one account but you can see that the buy was here when the stock began to reverse and i'll show you the intraday chart in just one second and i think i was using a half a point in this particular case so got out of half a point so that's uh whatever that is and then i got stopped out on a trailing stop so this is what it looks like intraday and again there's the trades there so the buy was actually here and this is a five minute chart now i know i've said the story a thousand times but it, I, it just makes a lot of sense it was kind of a minor epiphany for me uh i try not to trade something like e-minis too much although i do have a bit of affinity for a late day zero dte options and the e-minis and so far again knock on what i've done okay with that i have it printed money uh, i'd say more often than not i lose or scratch out but that sets me up for the occasional home run anyway e-minis is a very efficient market very difficult to trade and it always amazes me and as i've said before when i meet a man on the street like in the gym or whatever they'll they'll see my technical analysis tattoo and you know, they they kind of put two and two together and figure out that that I trade. And they're like, yeah, I trade Forex and E-minis. I'm like, that's the two hardest markets in the world to trade. You'd be much better off trading those crazy shit coins than Forex or E-minis. But anyway, long story endless, I remember, and I wasn't very good at it, but I was trading E-minis and I was active every day because I'm here all day in front of these, however many screens it is, <laughs> and doing other work, uh, projects and presentations and such and so it's kind of as Dakota said you put a you put a quote machine on your desk it's like having a slot machine on, on your desk you can want to feed it but anyway long story endless as I've said many times before I noticed one week it was like Wednesday and I hadn't made a e-mini trade yet and I'm like well this is strange that's as long as I've been you know doing this, this is as long as I've I've gone and then I think Thursday came around or whatever and, aha there's a setup and so I took it and I made money. And then the next week, I went two or three days without a trade and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then finally it dawned on me, I had accidentally changed my charts from five minute charts to 15 minute charts. So I was no longer chasing the markets with all those zigs and zags. And since then I've changed over to 30 minute charts. Now I'm showing you a five minute chart here. So you understand the open gap reversal, but I find a 30 minute chart it filters out a lot of the noise and I'm not as hyperactive by looking at a slightly longer chart. And I was kind of shocked a while back, many, well, a while back, 25 years ago, I knew a very active day trader. I was kind of shocked to find out that he uses 15 minute charts. I thought he'd be 
scalping on a one minute chart or something, but he's actually using a 15 minute chart. And not to digress too far, but the other thing that he did too, kind of like a Russian doll type of thing, and that's kind of exactly what I'm doing with the Russian doll, is he would take a daily bigger picture setup and he would actually look at that chart to make sure it looked good for weeks, months, and even longer. And then he'd go in and get a little day trade piece out. And that's kind of what I'm doing with the Russian doll. You'll take something like off the Landry list, which is my daily list of mostly pullback related stocks. And you go in for an intraday trade because you've got this bigger picture trend behind you followed by a pullback. But anyway, open a gap reversal. You want to wait for that market to look like the hook is in. Sometimes it'll it'll rally up, they come right back down. Okay, a little fake out. But sometimes that second or third push higher is when you want to get in on these opening gap reversals. So the buy was there. And then I took profits. And I noticed here it says market. I think initially that was a limit order, but it was like one cent away from the IPT. And what was I using in this particular case? I think it was uh, about a half a point. And I figured it was close enough. I meant to grab my trading journal earlier and look it up. And I, if you have any questions, I certainly could do that. But I think it was like one cent higher. I didn't know it was going to take off in the next five minutes to go straight up. But I was concerned that it wasn't going to hit the IPT. And I figured, you know, better than the Pokemon, I should it not. And then a trailing stop stopped me out of the remainder. So was, I think it was a half a point trailing stop. And of course, you give up a little bit of the trend in the end. And, and that's what being a trend following moron is all about. And I love these automated trailing stops because you don't have to think about it too much. Now, every now and then what I'll do, if I really think I've got a pretty good trend developing, I'll actually loosen up that automated trailing stop and let it go. Now, I don't use these on daily charts, automated trailing stops, that is, because we're trying to capture a much, much, much longer term trend.